on to basically where we left off on Friday. We had a reactor. We said that that reactor was filled with 500, 500 cubic meters of pure water. And at T0, the pump was turned on and we're pumping in a non-reactive salt solution that has a concentration of 100 milligrams per liter and at a flow rate of 50 cubic meters per day. And you're told that the volume of this solution is constant, in which case Q in equals Q out, which we can call Q, and that is 50 cubic meters per day. And you were asked to draw a picture state your assumptions and write a mass balance. And this is what we did on Friday. So we've got to this point on Friday. We wrote an equation in mathematical terms. So we wrote it in words, we wrote it then in terms. And then what I drew was a model or um, a graph that showed the change in concentration with time. Now, I could have written this for mass versus time. Why in this case is mass interchangeable with concentration? I want to try and answer that in the chat. Why is mass interchangeable with concentration? So we have here the change in mass exactly because volume is constant. Okay, because here change in mass with respect to time and that's equal to dcv dt, it's change in concentration times volume. And since volume is constant, we can factor out volume and in this case, and for all practical purposes, everything we do this semester, okay, we will assume constant volume. So mass and volume will be interchangeable. It's not true if your volume is changing. It becomes a much more complicated situation. We need partial differential equations. We're not going to go there. Um, e and E801 is where you really start looking at. If you take that as a, either as an elective in your undergraduate program or if you continue on for graduate school, that is where you would look at these more complicated problems. Okay, so as I said, we have our equation, wrote this. We said that Q in equals Q out equals Q. So we have this equation here. This is our mass in. And this is our mass out. And this is equal to V dc dt. And then if we integrate this expression, we're going to integrate it from C0 to CT and from time 0 to time T. And this is the general equation that we will achieve. Okay. Now remembering, we go back here to this example here. We start out here with, with pure water. So C0 is equal to zero. So in the, the case that we have here, this term drops out of the equation because C0 is equal to zero. So the only part of the equation that we need is this first part of the equation. What if the initial concentration were not zero? And I 
realized something here. I'm just going to. So we have that previous equation that I just gave you. If we plot the data, so we've plotting T, T versus C. Note, initially we start with pure water in the reactor. And as we're pumping into the reactor, so here's our reactor. Okay, we're pumping in a solution that contains 100 milligrams per liter. So over a period of time, this is our non-steady so we have non-steady state conditions initially as the concentration is increasing. And then we reach steady state conditions here. And notice we're at 100 milligrams per liter. Okay. Now, what if the initial concentration were not zero? Let's say it is 50 milligrams per liter. So in this case here, we have a reactor. We start out with 50 milligrams per liter as C0. We're still pumping in 100 milligram per liter solution. We still have C out here. Here is still the same, and the volume is still the same. So we keep everything constant, except for the fact that in this time, we have a 50 milligram per liter solution in the reactor. What's the steady state concentration? Anybody want to venture to guess state? What would be the steady state concentration in this case? We still have the same equation. If 50 is possible, anybody else want to make a statement? Think about it. Okay. So it's going to be 50 here. Okay. Cn is 100, and every we're going to plug in numbers, okay? So it's just 1 minus exponential of q is 50, d is 500, t is t value that we use, plus 50 here, exponential of minus Q minus 50 over 500. Again, T, okay. So the answer is 100, okay. We start here now at 50. And that concentration will continue to increase. Think about here, here's a reactor. We start at 50. We're adding 100, but basically you're flushing the system out with this 50, with this 100 milligram per liter solution. So what's in the reactor is also leaving. So basically you're replacing that 50 over time with a 100 milligram per liter solution. And it's going to continue to increase here over time, and then at steady state, we end up with the exact same position, the exact same condition we had when we started at zero. So at steady state, we will end up with 100 milligrams per liter. Now, what if instead we have a situation where now we start with 50 milligrams per liter is C0, but instead we flush out, we're flushing the reactor with a pure water solution. What's the steady state concentration now? Same equation, and you're absolutely right. And so we start with 50, we're flushing with that pure solution, so here's our reactor. We start with 50. We flush with a pure water. Okay. And notice the concentration is going to decrease with time until it reaches zero. So the steady state concentration is zero. Okay. 
And notice in all cases, here, in all cases, the time to reach steady state is about 40 days. It's roughly, where we have no reaction, it's roughly four times the t detention time. Our detention time, and how do we calculate that detention time? So volume is 500 cubic meters. Q is 50 cubic meters per day. So our detention time is 10 days. So notice here, in a general rule, you'll see that typically it takes about four detention times to reach steady state without reaction. If you have a reaction, that will change. But without a reaction, it takes roughly four. So we've got to flush out the system, essentially four volumes in order to reach steady state. 